Are you guys happy with it right now? Yes, very happy. <laughs> this time on Distant Shores, we're super stoked to see the progress of our aluminum sailboat being built at KB Alubau in the Netherlands. We see how the hull is being leveled out upside down and watch progress on the frames and stringers as the structure comes together. It's a deep dive into metal boat building and as a break at the end, we explore the bicycle culture in the Dutch countryside. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. We've been cruising and living aboard for 32 years, documenting the sailing lifestyle. Join us for the building of our fifth boat, a custom aluminum Orion 49. Today we started uh, to build up the boat. Uh, before we had uh, made all the frames and uh, phrase all the, of milled all the stringers. Um, here we have uh, the bulkheads. We have uh, welded it all together. And um, now we have been started uh, to welding the decks together and uh, put the first frames and the bulkheads on it. The, this is the fastest part of building the ship. The hull is being built upside down. If we take the hull plate away, we can see the deck laid out on the floor. It has stringers welded into place using the lines marked on the deck plates. Next, some of the frames and bulkheads are attached to stand up on the deck. Note the deck is somewhat rounded and slanting down, so it has to be lifted up into the correct position in 3D space to be level. The deck must be raised so the bulkheads and deck plating can take their proper shape. Leveling is done with tape measure, plumb bob and level, as well as modern laser leveling tools, Class explains. And we are uh, now busy uh, with a laser line. We have lines over here on every frame. There, there, there. Also on the bulkheads are the same lines. And we are leveling it up on the same height because when you have uh, this, this on the same height, uh, the shape of the boat will be perfect. So first we are putting the bulkheads on the right height, after that we are putting the frames on the same height. Yes, yes, the concrete floor is, uh, is leveled, but we are checking it all with a, with a laser. The laser is over there and we have uh, a small uh, box to the laser and you will need to hold it water, uh, water tight, of a, what, how do you call it, water level. Oh, you have hold it level. Oh, you, you put this side on the frame line. And when you have it on the exact height, it gives another beep and it gives one line. <laughs> then it's perfect. <laughs> when a bulkhead is positioned in the correct place, a bracing piece is welded right onto the floor to make sure the bulkhead won't shift as other parts are added. This is just a temporary weld while the construction continues and will be removed when the hull is complete. Yes, we are so. welding uh, some pieces under it, put it on the floor, and weld it on the floor. So it's connected to the floor, because when you start welding the whole boat in a few weeks, we will do that. It's going to shrink and uh, you, you will, uh, we have to keep the boat in the, in the, the normal shape, like this. So we are connecting it to the floor on a few places. On every three meters, we're gonna connect it to the floor. The first step now is put all the frames on the boat, all the stringers on the boat. The shape of a hull is supported by frames which run transversely from the center line up to the deck. In some cases, the frame is replaced with a structural bulkhead, dividing the inside accommodations and providing even more support. Stringers run lengthwise in a boat hull, stiffening the structure. Since the days of wooden ships, designs have relied on frames and stringers to add the amount of strength needed without adding too much weight. 
With an aluminum boat, the stringers are cut to the exact shape they are designed, with the curve built into the millimeter. Then uh, we are um, going to check it, is everything in one line, and then we are going to start with the hull plating. Have you made any hull plates yet? Um, yes, they are all under on the pallet, but we have to farm them on the farming machine. We, I think we start next week with farming. Yes, then we uh, start welding everything on the whole boat, like to make it watertight. That's a good idea. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's, uh, and Important. after that we're going to turn around the hull. When do you think turning around the hull will come? Uh, I think um, after our holidays, five, six weeks after holiday. Five yeah. or six after the yeah. holidays? Yes. So like the end of September? Yes. And then we have to put the, the superstructure on it and the cockpit and then finish the boat. Well, thank you very much. Yes, for, you're welcome. Thank you very much for the update and thank you for all the care you're taking okay, to make yes. the boat good. Yes, thank you're you. very welcome. Thank you very much. Finally, after all this time, this is so super exciting to see the boat taking the shape of a hull and getting to see all the insides and how it's done has been extra interesting as well. So these guys are so precise. All these hulls are cut down to the millimeter and the height of the way everything is adjusted is down to the millimeter as well and lined up in square. And unfortunately, now we have to go back to Canada, so we're going to be keeping track of the boat via the webcams I've set up. So we'll try to do updates from that, keep you up to date on the program. And we'll be also going over systems design and installation and the rest of the design features and getting that updated out to you too. You can't visit the Netherlands without noticing how many people get around on bicycles. For our three weeks here, we've rented bikes instead of a car. Besides getting to the boat builders, we take the chance to explore the extensive network of bicycle paths that run across the whole country. There is 35,000 kilometers or 22,000 miles of cycle track in the Netherlands. We end up following a route that parallels a canal and it seems strange to be well in land with just bicycles and boats, no cars in sight.
This has been a very exciting month over here. And of course, seeing so much progress on the start of Distant Shores 4 with uh, aluminum plate construction, which we've never seen and are learning how all that works. We've made a lot of progress with that and specs, but there's still a few things to be done. So when we get home, we're gonna be looking over uh, the different options for the hybrid drive system, see which one's gonna work best for us. And uh, we won't be back here again now until September, so it feels like we're missing a lot of stuff. But we'll be able to keep in touch with the progress of the boat with the webcams that we've installed. So that'll allow us to see the frames coming together, see the rest of the welding going on, and then it should be getting nearer finished when we come back the next time. Join us next time for hull plating as we learn how the aluminum of the hull plates is formed into the curved shapes of the hull and attached to the frames and stringers of the rapidly progressing sailboat. All going well, our hull and deck will be completed by KB Alubau in November and they have a slot available to build the next one. It would be my dream to help another sailor get going on their own expedition sailing adventure. We've got upcoming videos planned on rig design, power systems, interior layout and more. Throw a comment below with your suggestions or thoughts.